Thanks for joining us on the weekend edition of National Focus. I'm Kadisha St. Louis. Coming up, Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt congratulates Sedima for 25 years of service. Three nursing students benefit from scholarships, and the Ministry of Education meets principals before new academic year. Stay with us for details of these and other stories after this. Think water, think life. Water refreshes, restores, cleans, and enhances growth. Potable water is a benchmark for development. Dowasco is serious about its mandate to ensure easy access to potable water island-wide and provide sewage services for a cleaner environment. Dowasco is your water and sewage company. Thanks for staying with us. Honorable Prime Minister Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt has described the 25-year service of the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, SEDIMA, as extraordinary. Honorable Skerritt, in an address in the observance of SEDIMA's anniversary on Friday, noted that Dominica is especially grateful to SEDIMA for its work done in comprehensive disaster management. He thanks Sedima for its invaluable contribution to Dominica's effort at disaster risk reduction and expertise provided following Tropical Storm Erica in 2015. He said it was vital to Dominica's immediate response and recovery efforts. The Dominica leader remarked that as Dominica continues to experience and prepare for the effects of climate change, Sedima's role will become ever more critical. The Honorable Prime Minister thanked Sedima for its services and pledged to work with the organization as it fulfills its mandate to respond and reduce the risk and loss associated with disasters. On Friday, the Ministry of Education held the opening session of a principal's meeting to usher in the 2016-2017 academic year. The Honorable Minister for Education and Human Resource Development, Peter Seja, commended the principals and their staff for their dedication, especially following the passage of Tropical Storm Erica last year. He also commended the principals for the excellent performance of students during the past year. Honorable Seja told principals that government is working to continue to provide a safe, conducive environment for them to deliver their best. That is why this year, the government of Dominica has committed to ensuring that we continue the development, first of all, of the infrastructure, and secondly, giving the support to human capacity development. And in this year's uh, budget, we have seen allocations to address capital works within the school system. First of all, at the Dominica Grammar School, this year we have allocated 2.5 million EC dollars to commence work at the Dominica Grammar School, which is the largest secondary school on island. We will also see works commence on the designs for the Goodwill Secondary School, another government-owned school, and I would venture to say one that has outlived its uh, productive life. The Thibault Primary School and the Kalibishi Primary School are also on the cards for reconstruction. Chief Education Officer Melina Fontaine also joined the Honorable Minister in commending principals for their work over the past year. She announced that there will be some changes to personnel in a few schools for the new year. Changes of principals at the primary level. Mrs. Magdalene Honoré, who has moved from Wesley to Paybush Primary. Mrs. Cynthia Joseph from Paybush to Woodford Hill. Ms. Nadia Privo from Woodford Hill to Wesley, Mrs. Miriam Lewis, who is now the principal of Massac Primary School, while Mrs. Daly is the principal of Goodwill Primary School. At the secondary level, Mrs. Octavia Alfred is now the principal at the Northeast um, Second Comprehensive School, and Mr. Steve Hippoli, the principal of Casabro Secondary School. 
new principals, and I would just like them to stand up so that we can see them. Miss Mary Didier is the new principal at St. Mary's Primary. Thank you. Let's welcome her. And Mr. Thomas Holmes is the new principal for St. Mary's Academy. The Chief Education Officer also appraised the principles of a number of initiatives that the Ministry will engage in over the next year towards the continued development of the education system. We will give focus to policy development, particularly in the area of early childhood development, school nutrition and school safety. Various programs ongoing and new that focuses on quality and equity within our system will be implemented. And I just want to mention a few of the key ones. We will continue to implement the Early Learners Program, which is being funded by United States Agency for International Development, USA, and implemented under the leadership of the OECS Commission. The goal of the ELP program is to improve the reading skills of students from grades K to three. We have made strides and after five years of implementation, we are beginning to see the effects of some of the practices in our schools. This year, we plan to do more in the area of disaster risk reduction. The process has actually started, and in a while, we will have a brief presentation from our UNDP consultant. We will also continue our public awareness as we seek to involve the community and develop relationships for the benefit of our children. She added that school dropouts will also be given attention with education consultant Gloria Schillingford at the helm. There are also plans to expand the Caribbean Vocational Qualification or CVQ. New offerings such as auto mechanics and cosmetology will become available at a few schools. A program dubbed I Can See will also be launched in October and the implementation for the OECS Education Improvement Project will commence this academic year. GIS will bring you more from this meeting in a subsequent newscast. In more news, officials of the Dominica Festivals Committee are encouraging nationals to consider opening their homes to foreign patrons of the World Creole Music Festival. Organizers of the festival revealed to the media this week that based on feedback from L'Express de Zille, wind air at the local hotels and guest houses, the number of incoming guests could be tremendous. Promoter Val Cuffey says more rooms are needed. If you don't have anybody who have homes, because we're expecting um, from what we are getting from um, Wadix and Ezra is that Guadeloupe and Martinique will be empty. So we want to make sure that every, every available home is, can be made available. So if you know of that, if you can pass it with it wrong, we would like to, to see what you have to offer. Um, because we want to, to make sure that everybody who comes to Dominica can at least get a bed and have a good time in our country. Word has reached the DFC that a large fishing boats are being chartered to ferry Antiguan revelers to Dominica in time for the three nights of pulsating rhythms. Coffee says pre-festival jam sessions are scheduled for the Friday and Saturday evenings of the show from 4 to 7 p.m. and locals are invited to have guests freshen up and have a meal before the fair begins. We have a whole list of people who have houses that we, we, we rent from, get them to open their doors and stuff like that. We are also asking the hotels and the guest houses um, out of town as well to make their, their properties available and to put in together with various packages that you can get your, get your tickets, get your, your, your bus into, into the city as well. Um, but we really are, are, are appealing and we have been making the calls, um, Marilyn and the team, and to ensure that we can get as many homes as possible within the rural or catchment area. He says organizers look forward to the upcoming developments like the Silver Beach and Kempinski results in the coming years. Meantime, the final night of the show on October 30th, which begins at 4.30 p.m., is being promoted as a family-friendly. Kids' tickets will only cost $50. We expect that um, in Dominica, um, once you have reached the age of, um, of maturity, which is normally 16, um, we, we expect that you will be guided by your parents uh, to such an activity. Uh, so we expect them to, if you bring in your 16 year old out, to, to have that responsibility given to the parent and we are providing a ticket that they can afford. Um, but we want them to, be, to, to, to get an experience and, we, and Sunday lineup, it, it, we hope to end at 1 a.m. and we, go, we, we keep it to that, to that, to that, so people can go to work next day. Um, but definitely um, we, from 4.30 up until um, 8 o'clock, they will be acts that uh, will create device for, for the children. 
Um, we hope that depending on how we see ticket sales going for children, that we will add additional um, things uh, to, to, so that they can come out and be part of it. But we want to make um, this festival um, for Sunday experience quite different from the other years. You're watching National Focus. More when we return. Let's have some fun, eh? I'm not ready for your kind of fun yet. But everybody else is doing it. But I'm not everybody else. I'm me, and I want to do well in school. Well, you definitely get an A for attitude. I plan to get an A in life, and then I think of your kind of fun. So what am I to do in the meantime? You'll survive. Say no when you're not ready. Welcome back. Three final year professional nursing students pursuing the Bachelor's of Science nursing program will soon have less of a financial burden. On Friday, the Agnes W. Brooks Nursing Scholarship was presented to Dora Bellot, Tisha Lawrence, and Denisa George, three BSc nursing students of the Faculty of Health Sciences. This award was primarily made possible through the work of the General Nursing Council. President of the Council, Jean Jacob, says this is all part of their mandate. The principal function of the Council is to improve standards of training and conduct, which it does in the interest of the public. The Council approves the curriculum for the basic nursing, and education and midwifery programs and approves the examinations which qualify nurses to be registered to practice in the country. Another of the con Council's responsibility is to ensure that nurses are registered and licensed to practice thereby ensuring the safety of the public. The Council has been following the progress of students enrolled in the nursing programs at the Faculty of Health Sciences and is also aware of the financial difficulties experienced by some in their quest to pursue the nursing program. It is with this in mind that the, that the Council, as one of its activities, undertook to provide one scholarship to a deserving student for the duration of the three-year nursing program based on a set criteria. Three final year students were recommended to the council by the Faculty of Health Sciences. And based on the interview, the panel indicated that all three students had specific needs and recommended that the council award a scholarship to each candidate for the final two semesters of their nursing education program. Dean of Student Development and International Affairs for the Dominica State College, Beverly Libla, speaking on behalf of the DSC, stated that the college welcomes all level of partnerships and so embraces these scholarships. At the Dominica State College, we always welcome this level of partnership when such assistance is provided to our students to pursue their career goals. To the students, let me say to you, to whom much is given, much is expected. Much has been given to you, so much is expected from you. The onus is now on you to make yourself, your family, but most importantly, your profession and your sponsors proud. Principal Nursing Officer Cesarina Ferrell dubbed the scholarship presentation a landmark event for the General Nursing Council as it is the first of its kind and believes that it will assist in the development of the health sector. This event today highlights an initiative which is very significant, not only to the individual recipients, but also to the Ministry of Health and Environment. The health workforce have been identified by WHO as one of the six building blocks of a health system and have been an area of much focus during the past decade. It is important to note that nurses account for the largest professional group in the health workforce, impacting clients throughout the life cycle, from the cradle to the grave, hence significantly influencing health outcomes. The importance of adequate numbers of trained nurses, therefore, is well recognized and cannot be overemphasized if we are to achieve our global health mandates to include universal health access, and universal health coverage, the sustainable development goals, and addressing non-communicable diseases, among other areas. 
She addressed the recipients of the scholarships. The recipients of the scholarship, you are challenged to live up to the expectations of the profession, not only in your academic performance, but in your attitude, delivery of patient care, relationship with internal and external customers, conduct and deportment, to name a few areas. You are challenged to be impactful, to be change agents, and to make a difference. There is a saying, and Mr. Libra took that from me, to whom much is given, much is expected. <laughs> be reminded that there are high expectations from each of you, and you will be required to be good stewards of your gifts. She spoke about the gifts too. Okay? And to be good patriots of your country. I want you to hear this one well, the good patriots of your country. The recipients of the scholarships also expressed their thanks. Firstly, I would like to thank God for recognizing my need and my family's need. And I'd like to express my deepest gratitude also to the Faculty of Health for bringing up my name to the Nursing Council and also to the Nursing Council for giving this scholarship every year because trust me <laughs> it's a tremendous help and i think well i'm speaking for myself i really i am really grateful for it thank you very much let me start by saying thank you to the faculty of health sciences for um, bringing my name up to nursing council and also to nursing council by extension for this noble gesture. I must say that I was really in need of this scholarship and I am truly thankful because the creator said in everything to give thanks. So that's why I am thankful and I really appreciate it and I will continue to do my best so I can complete the nursing program successfully. Thank you. First off, I'd like to start off by saying thank you very much to the Faculty of Sciences. Um, I'm very grateful that you recommended me to the Nursing Council. I was quite surprised because I'm very quiet. I'm not outspoken. <laughs> but you all saw something in me that is there. So i like to also say thank you to the Nursing Council for this great opportunity and um, along with my colleagues we will surely put it to great use. And finally this news time the organizers of the Nature Island Literary Festival and Book Fair have announced the new dates for this year's edition. The event was usually hosted as part of the Dominica Festival of the Arts in May. This year, however, the festival was rescheduled to accommodate teachers and students who traveled out of Dominica for summer vacation. Deputy Chair of the festival, Dr. Owen Bully, stated that the committee felt it was most important that young people be exposed to the best writers of the Caribbean and introduced to the many careers that were open to them in the fields of writing and publishing, hence the importance of as many young people attending as possible. This year's main event will be held on Sunday, September 11th at the UE Open Campus at 10 a.m., followed by a Merrow Beach Rhyme from 3 to 9 p.m. On Monday, September 12th, there will be a special schools festival showcase at the Arabic House of Culture. All are free and open to the public. We now join Kimani Seja for a review of this week's top stories. Welcome to this week's edition of Flashback. In the headlines this week, Honorable Prime Minister and Minister for Finance Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt on Monday revealed that he will once again go on tour to continue promoting Dominica's Citizenship by Investment program. The Honorable Prime Minister was speaking at the signing ceremony for three major developments soon to come on stream under the CBI program. British Navy ship, the Royal Fleet Auxiliary Wave Knight, docked at the Rozo cruise ship berth on Monday for a three-day visit to Dominica. The visit of the British Navy ship is a year-round commitment by the British government to the Caribbean region in support of humanitarian aid and disaster relief, as well as counter-narcotics operations. Organizers of the 19th World Creole Music Festival are doing things differently this year. Festival promoter Val Coffey announced on Thursday that the food court at the forecourt of the Windsor Park Sports Stadium 
will be renamed the village and will be an experience. The processing center will also be renamed the Jeff Joe Ticket Processing Center. School bus tours, meet and greet sessions with the headline apps and new VIP also forms part of the changes. Three Dominican nationals will benefit from a British scheme to award scholarships to pursue master's degree programs in British universities. The candidates were chosen from, the, from thousands of applicants across the Caribbean. Cornelia Felix, a lawyer by profession, will pursue a master's degree in human rights. Charissa Anselm, a biochemistry major, will pursue a master's degree in biomaterials and tissue engineering. And Oscar George, an economist by training, will pursue his master's degree in econo economic development and policy analysis. The Customs Division will soon be upgrading its systems according to Comptroller of Customs Roger Deschamps. Speaking at an official opening ceremony on Monday for the training program geared at enhancing Dominica's trading environment and export capacity, he revealed that the Customs Division will soon be upgrading its systems to the newest version of a secure world. The treatment of CARICOM nationals traveling in the region was the focus of a CARICOM committee meeting of ambassadors held in Trinidad on Wednesday this week. Given the various complaints made by CARICOM nationals, the committee of ambassadors was mandated to develop proposals for a set of rules that would be immediately accessible to CARICOM nationals prior to action to return those nationals to their home country. Dominica's ambassador to CARICOM, His Excellency Felix Gregoire, chaired that meeting. Close to 100 hoteliers and small restaurant owners attended a one-day forum to be apprised of the terms and conditions of the special loan facility currently available from government through the aid bank. Potential applicants had the opportunity to ask questions and raise matters of concern. Overall, the Honorable Senator Rob Tong, Minister for Tourism and Urban Renewal, says he is pleased with the outcome of the forum. These were some of the headline stories making the news this week. For details of each of these stories and others, visit our website or Facebook page. Back to Kadisha. McPherson St. Louis is next with your Creole highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à ce nouvel en Creole. Non moins, c'est McPherson St. Louis. Premièrement, le gouvernement Dominique vous une donation bien significante à la République Coréenne. Le pays a fait une donation de voitures ensemble et de matériaux pour le ministre Kalinago va une maison en territoire. Là. Et en présentation, point place, j'ai dit, on a ces bagailles là présenté. Le permanent secrétaire en ministre étranger, Sylvain Burton, fait parole que ça c'est une démonstration pour la relation là, qui a existé entre Dominique et le Coréen. Conseiller coréen Yang Sook Hwan aussi parlé contre autant l'année bon relation entre ces deux pays. En même temps, le ministre Kalinago, honorable Cassius Daru, oui, merci aux Coréens pour la donation. Là. Nous avons handé une cérémonie au um, gouvernement coréen pour faire des matériaux pour construire le Kaiba Moun Kalinago. À ce bihaf, c'est mon cardinal au territoire. Je veux vraiment dire merci pour le gouvernement et le gouvernement coréen pour ce qu'il a fait. Parce qu'en place cardinal au territoire, il y a des difficultés. Il y a autant de monde qui passe à faire moins de masse au caillou pour ça réhabiliter le caillou. Donc, ça nous a tapé. Il a vraiment aidé nous pour ça, aider ces monde, especialement les monde qui prennent l'âge. Nous Uh, originally, nous avons fait nous télé un de au moins 26 pour 30 monde mais parce que caillot est dans condition là il passe à moins j'ai encore nous décidé nous qu'il fait caill neuf bailleur vers les autres um, toutes amenities là pour mettre veille donc so, nous qu'il fait 10 en premier coup ever après ça nous qu'il continue le programme là la nouvelle, trois étudiants qui attendent des facultés sciences, santé, State College Dominique, reçoivent le scholarship au Conseil général de notre Dominique. Ces étudiants-là reçoivent le certificat de scholarship à eux pendant une cérémonie qui prend place à l'occasion pour les cliniques de l'hôpital Princesse Margaret Jordia. Nos Deborah Philip, c'est même Conseil général de notre Dominique. 
Nous avons fini la cérémonie de la Council. Là, nous avons trois nos qui ont dans les training pour aider les gens, les scholarships pour aider les gens qui ont fait training. Yo. Tout ça, c'est pour encourager les gens pour entrer dans les nos et puis faire bien. Et bien, là, ils sont là, puis ils sont bon, aider les gens pour une bonne santé à Dominique. Et bien, le Sin Council, c'est une un associe, association qui est responsable de nos, qui mène nos cas travail, et bien, pour encourager nos, pour ça faire bon travail à Dominique. Philippe Kakoui a associé nos là pour traiter la profession de la et de la dignité. Nous avons cru à Souyo parce que nous avons toujours tant de monde qui a parlé contre comment nos cas travaillent. Nos cas gardés contre les gens qui sont malades, c'est bien important pour nous avoir patience avec les gens, pour nous avoir un bon training, pour nous avoir des gens qui sont malades, pour nous aider, pour nous encourager, pour nous garder contre eux, pour nous aider. Tout ça qui a fait que les gens ont une bonne santé, ça qui a aidé le pays. Et puis finalement, après point, il y a un ensemble de hôtel et puis restaurant attendait un forum un jour pour te taper plus de temps et de conditions pour qualifier, pour faciliter l'on en aide banque. Le gouvernement Dominique fait avec la 15 millions de dollars qui banque là qui a conduit un programme assisté à mon secadé de Le record qui a montré que Dominique n'a pas de facilité hôtel et puis en 27 c'était fait pour jouer un standard international. Les gens qui qualifient pour taper assistance, qui taper opportunité pour augmenter l'occasion à eux, taper certification. Le ministère pour le tourisme, honorable sénateur Robert Tong, fait parole qui facilite l'on là bien formidable et puis qui augmente le service payé à CAF offert pour les gens qui ont visité. Le ministère Tong aussi applaudit les hôtel et puis restaurant pour dédication à eux, industrie là et puis gouvernement bien plein pour bagay cela. Mais c'est ça c'est tout pour nouvelle à quoi on peut présent. Non, moi, c'est Mac Fossil Sandos, ni un bon week-end. Au revoir. Children, yell and tell if someone tries to abuse you. Tell until someone believes you and they do something about it. For more information on child abuse or to report suspected cases on child abuse, contact the Social Welfare Division on 33 Great Marlborough Street or call 266-3020 or 266-3080. One way to build self-confidence is to lighten up. A simple way to dissuade yourself from taking action is to take whatever you are about to do too seriously. That makes it feel too big, too difficult, and too scary. If you, on the other hand, relax a bit and lighten up, you often realize that those problems and negative feelings are just something you are creating in your own mind. With a lighter state of mind, your task seems lighter and becomes easier to start. That's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash GIS News Dominica and follow our Twitter at GIS Dominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. Live streaming is also available on our YouTube channel 24 hours a day. From all of us here on the GIS News Production team, I'm Kadisha Sedlui. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.